get in. Hey, Sonny. How you doing? Come right on in. Yeah, Fred, this is uh, Sonny Cochran. Sonny, yeah, this hello, is Sonny. Sanford. Hey, Miss Sanford. Yeah. And that's, uh, 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 uh... Lamont. Yeah. Yeah, that's Sit Lamont. down, Sonny. Have a little sit down. Yeah, sit down, Sonny. Have a little sit down. Right here. Uh, say, Sonny, uh, are you a lawyer? That depends on who you ask. If you ask me, I'm a lawyer. Well, uh, who says you're not a lawyer? The state of California. <laughs> But Sonny knows more law than most judges. Go ahead, ask him anything, Fred. Well, look, look here, Sonny. Now, uh, Lamont here got a traffic ticket, and he's innocent. Now, what should you do about it? Well, two viable options immediately suggest themselves. He can either pay the fine or fight it. <laughs> Did you hear that, Fred? <laughs> he's good, man. Man, that was legal talk. <laughs> no, look, look. I'm... I'm going to pay the fine just like I did the last two and just skip all the hassle. You well, know? you have two prior tickets? Yeah. Within the past year? Yeah. If you have two prior tickets within the past year, do you know what this means? What? This means that this is your third ticket. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is... I told you he was good. <laughs> Look, under California law, you're only allowed four tickets in one year. And if this one goes on your record as the third one, you're only one away from the big one. The big one? What happens when you get the big one? Well, the judge can revoke your license and no more driving. And then that means that goes the truck, that goes the business, that goes Sanford, that goes Son. Won't be nothing left but Ann. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm covering up this copper so nobody can see it. It's stolen goods. <laughs> Would you stop that? Now, the man told you where he got it from. Now, listen to me. Now, we bought some copper, and we're not responsible from where it came from. And besides, who's going to come around here looking for stolen copper? And that's all I'm going to say on this subject, Pop. I think you have a few more words to say now. What are you talking about? Police car just pulled up there by the curb. So that doesn't mean anything. They're just sitting in the car. And see, they're just getting out. They're looking around. And they're coming in here. Oh. <laughs> they got us. They got us. They didn't call us the stolen goods. Oh, they got us. I'm going to lose the place of business. And I'm going to jail. You hear that, Elizabeth? I'm coming to join you, honey. With numbers on my back. Oh. Now, just cool it, Pop. Now, we gotta be cool. We can't lose our heads now. We just act like we're playing checkers. Now, relax. It's your move. Come on in. The door's open. Out of mind, Fred. Oh, hey, hey, what's your problem? Well, we'll just sit down here playing some checkers. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Bill Smitty. I'd like to meet my new driving partner. This is Officer Swanhauser. We do the rounds together. Hey, how you doing, Officer Swanhauser? How you feel, Swanny? <laughs> the reason Officer Smith and myself are paying this call is for the purpose of issuing a warning. A warrant? A warning. <laughs> it's come to the attention of the department that an as yet unidentified suspect is operating in this area and attempting to sell copper that has previously been burglarized. And that said burglary may have been perpetrated by the suspect in question. <laughs> There's a dude trying to unload some hot copper that he snatched himself. Oh. <laughs> All I know is that you didn't get no work done around here, Pop. And you're still not gonna get nothing done because here comes your friend Bubba to waste some more of your time. Hi, Bubba. Hi, Fred. Hi, Lamont. Hey, what's up, Bubba? Fred, I don't know how to ask you this. Well, go ahead, Bubba. I mean, go ahead and ask. Well, man, I'm broke. Could you let me have five bucks? You caught me at a bad time, Bubba. I got it. <laughs> you know, I did a dumb thing this morning. I put my last $10 on a number. 
thought I had a sure thing. Mm -hmm. You see, I dreamt I was trimming Christmas trees. That's 374. Right. Could have won $6,000. $6,000. Well, Fred, thanks for the five. Hey, wait a minute, Bubba. You happen to know what number came out today? The one on riding a bus and train. 219. That's it. 219. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? You remember I was telling you about my dream? 219, dummy. <laughs> if I just put 10 bucks on the last $6,000 now. Yeah, yeah, Bubba had a dream, too. Oh, you call that a dream? Anybody dream about trimming Christmas trees in September is a born loser. <laughs> if I'd have bet five bucks, I'd have $3,000. OK, Pop. $3,000. If I'd have just bet $3, I'd have 1800 All right. If I'd have listened to you, I wouldn't have nothing. But I didn't listen to you. I bet a dollar and won 600 bucks. Six big ones. <laughs> my heart! I ain't never seen that much money in my life! <laughs> oh! Hey, Lamont, come here. Come here and open it up and see if the money's still in there. <laughs> Look at that, Pop. Stacks of 20s, 50s, 100s. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't stand it. I ain't gonna make it. You hear that, Elizabeth? I'm coming to join you, honey. Rich. Would you, would you, would you stop that, Pop? Now, this is no time to have a heart attack. We're rich. We can retire. Yeah. No more getting up at 6 o'clock to get that old stupid truck started by 8. 25 years of hard work, keeping my nose to the grindstone, wheeling and dealing and coordinating. And finally, it all paid off. You found a satchel full of money. Hey, let's move. You can get a new home. Why not? We can afford it now. Where will we move to? We can move to Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. Yeah, you think, you think the neighbors will let us live there? Well, Wilt Chamberlain lives in Beverly Hills. Well, we better get a house next to Wilt, because he'll let us. Yeah. <laughs> and we could travel, too, Pop. All around the world, any place we want to go now. Yeah, I could go to St. Louis. <laughs> no, Pop, I mean, we could take a cruise. See, we could take a cruise to one of those tropical islands. Yeah, that'd be good for my arthritis. Yeah. <laughs> it's the police, Pop! They followed me here. They're gonna think we stole this money. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't put it too close to the door. Don't put it that door. Don't work there because they're gonna set up these two things. Be careful. Oh, no, sir. Wait a minute. Lamont, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Settle down. That's not the police. They're not coming. That's a fire truck. Oh. Well, I don't know what to tell you because I've already paid for it. And not only that, I'm picking it up tomorrow. Selfish. That's what you are. What about me? Hey, Pop. Let's face it. Now, I'm getting a car because I need a car. I can't continue to take our girls in that old broken-down truck. What's wrong with the truck? If she wants her hat to blow in the wind, let her take her wig off and hold it out the window. There's no use. You don't understand nothing. Do you realize, Pop, that everybody has a car today? And everybody has a color TV. Arthur Matthews' son bought him a color TV, and that's a good son. Good and kind and thoughtful. Pop, Arthur Matthews' son is a crook. You told me that yourself. He's a gambler and a hustler and a thief. Well, if a bum like that can buy his ugly father a TV, <laughs> why can't you get your handsome dad one? <laughs> so now I'm not even as good as Arthur Matthews' son, huh? Well, I don't know how you could go on living with somebody like me. Well, I ain't, I can't, I'm not, and I'm leaving. <laughs> Why don't you go over to Arthur Matthews' house? You can watch television with him and his ugly wife. Be like a rose between two thorns. Yeah, well, I'd rather be over there sitting between two ugly people watching television than to be here with you. I'm leaving. Well, go on, Rosie. <laughs> I'm leaving. And you know that trip you mentioned about going up the coastline? But when you start out there, I hope you run out of gas on a mountain. <laughs> station is 10 miles away, uphill. <laughs> and when you get there, I hope it's closed. <laughs>